G'day all. Um, so I'm not very good at these, so I'll preface with that. But um, I just wanted to make a little video because people keep asking about this and I just wanted to show people how this is done and uh, how to use these acrylic coasters from Boom. So this is one I've done previously and I'm, I'm kind of starting at the end rather than the beginning. And as you can see, that's just an acrylic coaster and it looks like it's been resin, but in actual fact, the paint is on the bottom surface. And if I turn it over, that's the other surface. And you can see the paint there, all right? So this is kind of the end rather than the beginning. So it's a bit backwards, but I just wanted to show you this. Now these coasters come in a pack of four and there are two parts to them. There's, this is a brand new clean coaster and you can see it's got a protective film on each side. And these are the backings, the felt backing for it. So I've painted this one about a week ago. So it, it's pretty well cured and it's had seven days of sitting. Now, people recommend sealing that edge before placing the felt on. I haven't bothered and I've found it hasn't had any detrimental effect on the coasters I'm currently using in the house at all. So it's quite simple. You peel off the protective layer, which just leaves the sticky surface. Once your coaster is ready to do it and you just line it up and press it onto the coaster. And as you can see, you now have a beautiful coaster that you can use in the house for whatever you want to use it for or perhaps sell it. I don't know, but um, I just love them. That one's going into my house. Uh, that will take a cup of coffee with no detrimental effect to it whatsoever. So how did we get to this point? Let's go there. So a few handy tips. These coasters need to be dipped into the paint. You can't just paint straight onto them. Now, I think this is an essential tool for every fluid artist. What it is, is simply an art wooden panel and it's covered in a high temperature Teflon barbecue mat. And the reason I do that is because you can cover it like a book. It makes a nice solid surface and whatever you paint onto this, once it's dry, you can peel it off like a skin. So you can put your art into a photo frame, cut it up to make jewelry pieces, whatever you want. It just makes a beautiful skin that you can use. But it's also, because it's wooden underneath, provides a nice hard surface for when you dip objects into it to pick up the paint. And I'll just get rid of this little fly. So this is what it looks like when you buy it from the hardware shop. It's just a hot plate liner or a barbecue liner. And you just cover it like a book. And as you can tell, my children suffered awfully at school because I was terrible at covering things. But that doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. So the other thing I'm going to do today is to teach you a little bit about this pastry brush swipe, which I've been using a lot of lately. Now, this is nice and small because I only want to do a coaster in this case. Um, but I'm just going to run through that process quickly for you as well. Now, I'm using the boom gels that I have a lot of because I'm actually running very, very low on supplies. So we'll just um, we'll, we'll go through those. Now, here's another little tip. I'm using this suction cup, which is a mobile phone holder that I used to have for my car. That is pretty much, it was garbage actually because the magnetic part of it kept falling off the back of my phone. But the suction cup is excellent. And what that does, I'll just bring out the last coaster if I place that on there, I can now 
dip my coaster straight in, hold it steady, and pull it from the paint in one smooth move. So I can maintain good detail without getting too much paint on my hands. Another tip, always leave the coating on both surfaces of the coaster until you're actually ready to dip. It protects it from dust and little grime and etc. from getting on the coaster. So let's start with the painting. Um, I'm going to put a base of Boom Gel Pinnacle sand, sand Down as my base. I quite like this colour combination. Now, usually when I do videos, my paintings end up terrible because I get all nervous and ruin them because I want them to be perfect and they never are. But we're just going to go with it today and it's more about how to use the coaster than the actual quality of the painting. Now, all I'm going to do is start in the middle and I'm just going to go around in a circle and make a nice base layer. in which to do the pour. Now the biggest mistake people make with boom gel is they look at it and they treat it the same way they would a mix of acrylic paint. Now the boom gel is quite elastic. It has, it's highly pigmented. So you don't need a lot to actually get a real subtle effect. So I never, where possible, cross over the boom gel when I'm pouring a colour. So I'll always pour it in one layer only. And you've got to give it an ability, and it has a fantastic ability, to self-level. So you don't need to be too concerned about missing a little bit, because it will self-level. And I always, when you're doing these coasters, just get rid of any little air bubbles that you see or any little defects, because that will transfer to the acrylic coaster. Now, because I'm going to do the pastry brush swipe, I like to lay just a little bit of colour in a line. It doesn't need to be a straight line. It just needs to be some sort of line. And I like to put the main contrast colour down first. So whatever your base colour is, your main contrast colour down first. And then follow that with the contrast to it. And this time I'm using black and white. And then this parrotfish green, which is all my bottle's a bit clogged, I'll just clear that so I can get a nice little line. And my favourite colour with all of these pastry brush swipes is metallic silver. What it does is it it tends to blend with the colours brilliantly and even where it maybe not show up it'll give the piece this metallic shine and and sparkle even if it absorbs or drops into the paint um, it's just a fantastic colour out of all the metallics the silver is my favourite now these are just your standard silicon pastry brush that you pick up from any supermarket or wherever. When you swipe these, only swipe once and lightly on one side. You can flip the brush over and use the other side, but never swipe it through twice without cleaning it um, because it just gets really messy really quickly and you'll lose the flow of it. All right. So what I usually do just start in the middle and just drag it out and just form nice patterns with it. You can do all sorts of things. There's no real rules to this. You just have fun with it. Um, and if you've got some thick lines, just 
grab another brush and pull it out. And I hope you can see that. I'll actually, once I get it a little bit more level, I'll show you what that looks like. But it's very, very pretty. Um, you don't want solid lines. What you want to do is try and find any bits that are too solid and drag the brush through. So you get this nice flow effect with it. Um, yeah, so there you go. Now this is quite thick. I want to thin this out a bit. Now normally I wouldn't spin where I'm at because um, I don't like the paint flicking everywhere. But being boom gel, I am actually can spin this a bit and thin it a bit. So I'll just do that help it level a bit as well. And that'll do us. All right. So I like that. So what we're going to do now is just remove the side we're going to dip, the protective coast coating on the coaster. So that's now the face of the coaster. This is the bit where it goes wrong. So you need to pick the part of the painting that you really want to keep. And you want to minimize too much movement of the coaster once you dip it in the paint. Now, the reason I like a firm surface, if you've got a soft surface like a canvas, it can actually compress and you can get a big air bubble under it. So when you, when you go to pull the second coat off, you'll end up with a large gap on the coaster. So you've got to be real careful of that. So all you do, pick the part of the painting you like the most. And dip the coaster in. Try not to move it around too much. And then pull it up. Now, that there looks quite rough. But trust me when I say to you, leave it alone. It will self-level through the drying process. And will keep you in good stead when, when you go to dry it. Now, notice these little air bubbles? Just very gently make sure you pop them because that can cause you problems later on. Being very careful not to touch the, surf the, the surface very much. Now, normally, I wouldn't do this. I'd let it dry. But what I'm going to do is try and take the coating off the other edge to show you what it looks like. So I'll just clean the edge so I can grab it. Those suction cups a little bit good. So I've pulled that off. Now I've got to be very careful here because this is not easy when you're dealing with wet paint. So, like I said, I'd normally let it dry, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I want to show you what it looks like. I wish I had better eyes and sharper fingernails, but I don't. So just bear with me for a second while I get this to work. And you can see there, I've successfully transferred that to the coaster. So that's our painting now. What I'm going to do is just let that dry. And then where we began is where we finish. Excellent little product. Boom Gel Acrylic Coasters. See you later.